Let's see how we can go outside of the open educational resources to find some more learning activities and um, experiences for the student as she explores the lifestyle of being a vegan. And so if we do a Google search for vegan, because we know that the student's pretty well adept at doing so, and she sees that she's got a number of resources here that she can choose from. A um, couple quick pieces of advice I would give the student would be to come over to advanced search and I want her to be able to have the ability to know that she can sort by format. So the original search was just going to be giving her web access along with images, but I can come on back here and I can say, I'm interested in maybe um, checking to see what other people have put out there around this topic of being a vegan from um, a PowerPoint perspective. So the advanced search now is giving me this file type PowerPoint and it's showing me that any other search results that come back are going to be PowerPoint slides that are going to, like this one, perhaps answer the question why people go vegan. So I'm not suggesting that she wouldn't do any deep dives into um, reading websites and blogs from other folks um, who've been sharing their own experiences as well, but this PowerPoint sometimes um, comes back with some great results because it's a lot of succinct information in a few short slides and usually does tell a story. So that's one um, way to go ahead and do this. And one other way that I like to uh, support people when they're looking for resources out on the web um, and tap into what other people have already done in terms of curating resources together around a topic is I either like to look at, uh, do a Google search with the, the search term, but also using either Scoop It or Paperly. These are both resources that are curating tools that are, allow somebody to gather um, and organize resources around a topic. So I take a look at this, the Vegan Shorts Daily um, Paperly or Keep It Vegan Daily Paperly. It's a paper. Um, the person who's curating this paper uh, basically streams in uh, via Twitter search terms content that has something to do with the vegan lifestyle. And so the student can come on in and just uh, limit the search for videos, uh, look at it by different topics here. The person who's curated this newspaper didn't have to lay out the format like this. It's just a, it's sort of a template, if you will. But the idea is that somebody is curating via paperly a topic of interest and it updates usually daily with new information that's out there on the web. So again, I'd be um, take a peek first and be concerned about some of the things that are coming through, but talk to the student about how that she can tap into other people who are cur curating items. So let's imagine that this um, one of the, the topics I'd like the student, or one of the activities I think that would make sense for the student to do when she's doing her individual passion project is to take a look at this paperly account and skim through it, see if there's something of interest for her that she can add to um, a playlist of sorts, if you will. So I'm coming back over to the Power My Learning, and remember we had pulled together three activities here for her uh, that were already uh, searchable and found within the Power My Learning, but I can embed my own activity. And so what I would do here is let her know that I think it makes sense for her to spend some of her passion project time um, searching the paper leaf to see if there's something of interest. So I have a description here, take time to search Oops. and find mm -hmm. and save. And now we'll see that there's another activity that's posted right over here. And then finally, you can see how this process is working. We can continue to negotiate based on a set period of time. So the student says she's got three days, three afternoons working on this passion project. We could add a checkpoint for her. So that's one of those formative kind of moments where I would want to be able to check in and be the facilitator of this learning for her. But you'll notice what it allows me to do is to take these checkpoints and align them to um, standards. So if I'm interested in science and I know that this is about health and so I'm sort of tagging that if you will. And then I'm going to choose the question type for my checkpoint. I'm going to do it as an open response because I'm thinking about this as a, a type of um, almost like an exit ticket before she moves on to the next um, portion of her learning. So the prompt might be um, at this point in your learning, what new driving questions do you have 
this would be a way for me to start to think about um, how to help her in these next steps to either do a deeper dive or maybe she's found a tangent um, that she's interested in exploring at this point. Um, I could go ahead and add this. Or, you know, I'm even thinking about this as a, what do you know at this point? What do you want to know? A KWL. So we'll create that and we'll notice that that checkpoint's here at this point as well. And then the student can start on her way. I fully understand that um, I wouldn't want her whole passion project to be structured within the confines of a playlist. Um, we know that what we would be doing with her would be to connect her in addition to experts in the field and have her think very um, deeply about an authentic audience with whom to share, that she would be social networking in other ways too, that she would be following blogs and maybe other Pinterest posts. But this idea of being able to pull together some um, resources in a kind of build your own textbook um, playlist way, I think is a really powerful way to start structuring and scaffolding um, student independent projects. Mm -hmm.